Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and I'm standing in a field of strawberries. Lots and lots of strawberries. We just need to add the shortcake. <laughs> so today we're gonna to talk about just add shortcake, the pattern that we're doing for the sew along, the table topper book. Uh, we're doing the next block in the sampler from the book. And I have a few other things. So first though, before we go any further, it is the 40th anniversary of E.T. the movie. Did you love that movie? Oh my goodness. Who didn't love that movie? I'm sure somebody didn't. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. If you didn't like it, I don't want to know. But what a sweet movie. 40 years. It was actually on June 11th was the anniversary of the, of the movie. Uh, but they're doing a premiere re-release for the 40th anniversary tomorrow which is August 12th. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I thought today, if you actually made an ET quilt, I'm sure there was ET fabric at some point. Uh, if you made a quilt with ET fabric, if you made something with the image from the movie, uh, I would love to see it on my quilt along with Pat Sloan. If you just wanna share another sci-fi movie, love that too. <laughs> He really is very unattractive though, alien. He could have been a little bit cuter, but you know, it's personal taste, I guess. Good old E.T. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the strawberry blocks first. I have got all the rows sewn. So that is the bulk of the quilt. And now we have this inner border. So the inner border is alternating light and print squares. So you're going to do four of these inner borders, but first there's a just a cream inner border, then there are the prints, then another cream inner border, and then the final uh, fab the final print border. So this is you know these this is great mindless sewing. That's what I call it, great mindless sewing, because you can just do cut up a bunch of the squares in the prints, cut up all your cream squares, and then you can just sit and sew. You could listen to books on tape, you could listen to a podcast, you could put your tablet on top of your machine or next to it, which is what I do, and watch something. I like to watch the Garden Answer ladies stuff. If I'm behind, I'll go catch up. Or another gardening one I like is um, Creekside with Jenny. So I watch those gardening ones while I'm sewing something like this because you don't have to really think a whole lot. So once you get all your pairs done, then you sew pairs to pairs and you have four, then you sew four at a time until you eventually get these inner strips. Nice, nice, fun sewing. <laughs> Well, I also, if you have not joined in, you don't have to make the whole strawberry quilt. You know, you could make one strawberry, you can make a strawberry table runner. Uh, if you want the kit, there are kits um, and they're great value. You get all of my birdsong fabric and you get to play with it and have a wonderful, wonderful, yummy, pretty quilt when you're done. Oh, before I sewed up those strawberries, I took a little walk outside in the garden and I took you with me. Let's go. So I'm gonna take you outside. We're gonna go out from my studio door here onto my patio around the corner to see the clothesline that I use to hang things on. I put some strawberry blocks out there and I just thought it would be kind of fun to take you along. So here we go. We're gonna go out the door. Woo! And you can see uh, just some of my stuff out here. So it's a little bit of a learning experience. I'm home a lot more right now, so I'm able to play around with the plants. This thing is not deep enough of soil. I have to like water it twice a day. So we've got the fire pit. And then this is where I had beautiful, beautiful daylilies, but these guys now cost so much shade that the daylilies just really, we only had a couple blooms. So we're gonna have to replant that. All right, so. My back garden, my backyard is mostly just a yard. Here we go, my two oak trees that have been here since we built the house. And we have a road right behind there, which you can see sometimes out the window of my studio. So I put some of the strawberry blocks up and I brought a little table out. My bucket has my clothes pins. So there we go, I thought you'd like to see that. So this is how I hang the quilts often. It's a full quilt here. And you can see from the trees around, I wanna show you where my studio window is. There it is. So that's the window you see. That's my desk is right inside of there. So, so just a kind of fun, different thing to show you today. All the strawberry blocks. These are the ones now I have to get sewn into rows. 
so that we have all the strawberries sewn together. And then the next thing we'll do is uh, today you're going to start working on getting those sashings done, the, um, the inner border, the inner border with the squares done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down um, off the wall so I can put up the table topper sampler section that's done and we're going to work on the next block for that. So I'll be right back. So the next block in our tantalizing table toppers sampler is the winter bliss. So here is the quilt in the book and I've got it here to show you. Yes. I don't know. I'm going to say this a lot, but I think it's right up there on the favorites. It's probably it might be the biggest one in the book. So this is definitely a table topper wall hanging. You could actually make this design for a baby quilt. Um, yeah, put one more row on it around one more round or even a border and it could even, you know, be a get stretched into a toddler's quilt. This could probably be a toddler's quilt, but it is, this was so much fun to do. It's so much fun to work on the colorations of it. So I want to put it on the wall here. Uh, okay. So I pinned that, which is really annoying, isn't it? I got to pick the pins out. <laughs> okay. Let me put this up here. So we're not making this whole quilt. We're making one block for the sampler, but I want to talk to you a bit about the quilt because it has great coloration. Uh, it has like medium, I mean, light as far, these are all dark fabrics, but it's still light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark, like, you know, this is a repeat uh, side to side. So there's one set of fabrics for the red, one set of fabrics for the green. But even though they're all dark fabrics, they have a gradation of color, um, a warmth of that sort of lighter to medium to darker units. Uh, so in there are actually different fabrics in here for that make that um, angle. Those are all different fabrics as well. So it is one where you play around with the placements, but we're just doing one block and one block for the sampler is uh, just one of the units. Let me see if I can. Yeah. So if you see here, like this unit, that's what we're making. Just one of those. So that was a really nice, easy one for this week. Now for me, here is what, what I'm working with is the um, bird song plus the solids. So I am going to be using a solid and I'm going to bring in the blue. So I'm going to use a blue bird song for that square. So we're going to go to the other side of the table and make a block. This is a nice, easy block for the week. Let's look at some options. I kind of know what I want, but I want to talk through it with you too. On, on this <clears throat> page 55, this shows you like a quadrant and you really can see then the shading of the block, the individual block, and then the shading. So if you're going to make the whole thing, this is super helpful. So on the layout, uh, we are on winter bliss and that is here. I, where you see the white here, more than likely I'm planning the, the cream color background. So I know for this block, I don't need any cream. Like I'm not going to make, I'm going to use one of the solids for this diagonal part. Um, so let's look at the combos that we have. I have got, this is what I'm thinking, you know, is the blue and then use um, two different blues on either side. So that block will, you know, pull a little bit more blue out. We have a lot of blocks still to do. So you have a lot of places to put all your pretty colors around. Now there could be some other ways. Now there's this gold in here and, and would be really a fun place to pop the gold, which I could put a blue on either side and pop the gold in the middle. I don't think I'd want to put the pink uh, with it, with that gold. I think if I use the gold, but I'm not, I'm loving the gold more with the green fabrics. Like if I had done this yellow here and the other green, like that would be really cool. I think the block for the green with the yellow, um, the green solid, the green solid. Now this would be very t kind of really cool tonal look would be the green on either side of that. But I think that's a bit too wishy-washy. So if I was using this green, I think I would go ahead and pull like the pinks and the uh, print, such as the center 
is. So like here's the center with that pink and green. If I'm going to use this for today's block, for this week's block, I think I would go with that. That's my second option. Um, but because I have so much of it right in the middle of the quilt, there, I've got everything on top of the quilt, you can't see it. So, so because the whole star is already this, I want to go with the blue. So, the, but I think it would look really nice with that pink and, and green with the green solid. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make our winter bliss block, which is just one quadrant. And I also am going to show you the quilting. It's kind of hard to see on that dark fabric, but it's great quilting. So I'm going to show that to you with an up close video. But let's make the block first. Here is the one block of winter bliss. Now you will note that some of the blocks have half square triangle units. For the sampler, I did the one without the half square triangle unit. I just think that looks um, like it's nicer for the sampler since it's not connected to anything. So there you go, one block. And let me, uh, let me do the close up now, show you the quilting on this one. Let's take a look at the quilting on the one for the book. So you can see, I think this feather right in here and I think the lighting is good right on this block where you can see all that other feather work. So this individual single feathers were done in all of those squares. And this was done by my friend Cindy Dickinson. Uh, so all of this feather work she did all along here. So this, you really can see it best on this green piece. I am gonna pull the back because of the thread colors. There you can see the chain of that. Uh, little single feather, which she also did right on the outside here. It is such beautiful quilting. Cindy did such a nice job. Let me take this down real quick uh, because first I have to put up a little surprise and then I'll put up the table topper stuff. Oh, let me just put him over here. Okay, so first a little surprise. Do you remember the quilt that my mother-in-law did for my niece that I need to stabilize the fabrics because there's a lot of shredded fabric? And we all looked for this. We, the royal we, everybody went out and looked for this quilt uh, pattern, which is called Ragdoll. It was published by Quilt Maker Magazine. And so the about a week or a couple weeks ago, I got this really fabulous email that said, hi, <laughs> my name is Karen Gillis Taylor and I designed that quilt. Isn't that fabulous? So Karen wrote me and we chatted back and forth a bit. Uh, she wrote this while she was a employee of the magazine. So she was a staff graphic artist. Uh, she is an artist by trade. She's retired now. You can, I have a link in the description box and at my website where you can go see her paintings because she's a painter. But what she told me, one of the interesting things is that when she hired onto the magazine, they needed artists because they did a lot of the, they didn't do the graphics the way we do them now with, you know, digital and things. They painted them. And so um, the one pattern that was sent to me, look, do you see how this is painted? So this is what Karen painted. So not only did she design this adorable quilt, which she designed for her daughter, and here's a picture of Karen with her quilt. Isn't this fabulous? I asked her if she would send me one and if I could share it with you, and she said yes. Isn't that awesome? So here's another page from the pattern where you can see, see she painted the pattern. She painted all this. So there's not, it's not digital graphics or anything. This was back in the day <laughs> of, of magazines. So I thought that was really cool because I had no idea. Now when Quilt Maker reissued this in one of their following, I have a link below. If you want the pattern, you have to write to Quilt Maker via their website uh, or find it as a used copy of the magazine um, on eBay or Etsy or Amazon. Um, but they also put out a single pattern. And by the time they put out the single pattern, they didn't do the painting anymore. They still, ha they now had the, um, you know, a real picture of a real quilt. So. I just wanted to show, show that to you and share it because I just thought it was so fun. And I still, have all, I still have to sit down and do the work on this quilt because it has the one fabric, which my mother-in-law used for the background, is like totally shredded. So it needs, it needs stabilized. And then someday I will remake this for my niece. 
<laughs> so she can have a new one. Greg just brought the mail and I have one mail call. So let me do that since I'm going to have a break uh, for a few days of no videos. This is from Linda in Florida. Oh, look at the bird. I love it. She sent me uh, a beautiful, beautiful water bottle. This is from Starbucks and a lovely Starbucks card. Whoops. Look how, look at that. Nice. And some aqua squares, <laughs> two and a half inch squares. I'm getting quite a stack of these. Thank you so much, Linda. All right, let me put this up here and show you the uh, center. And then now we have our first square going around the edge of it. And it'll be over here like that. I think that's where it is on the drawing. Yeah, top left. So there you go. We are on our way to more blocks for the table topper sampler and you are working on your strawberries. Now I want to remind you the next video is Tuesday. So I'm taking a few days off of doing videos and I will see you online for sure. But I wanted to remind you that there's no, there'll be the next new video will be on Tuesday. So be sure you go back and maybe watch some old videos of mine. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan zone. I will see you online. <laughs>